Hello, beautiful human. You clicked on our interview with Madison Beer. This is her third time coming on the show, and sister knows how to spill. Love her. She is as beautiful as she is talented, and she's just a good energy to have in the studio. We have a podcast. There's a link in the description below. Leave your honest feedback on the interview in the comment section, and yeah, if you like what you watch, it'd be cool if you subscribed. Okay, enjoy. Let's do this. Heather, Dan, hi, hi, here in the studio, and Madison Beer, hi. Yeah. <laughs> For what the fourth time, fifth time? Uh, it's been a bunch of times. Four sounds right. probably okay. yeah. Well, this I, is great because somebody told us Madison wasn't coming back in. <laughs> what? Who told you that? We heard that. We heard whisper through a whisper through a whisper. <gasps> Who lied to you? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Someone really lied to you. I feel like you like coming to do our show. Are you kidding? It's my. I get so excited to come. Well, I thank you. For I look forward by. to it. Every time. And you you know, you have been here four times and you're saying the last time you were here you were turning eighteen. Yes. And that was a big deal because it was like I mean eighteen. Legal. Now you're nineteen. What is happening here? You're you're <laughs> tangled. I don't know, but you know, we're just gonna there Um you go. Yes, I'm almost nineteen. I will be in six days. Is it crazy that you're still so young? I mean like because you live such an old soul life. I know. I mean, you know, I feel like I'm young, but to me, I'm older now. Like, obviously, 19 is still really young, but I was always the youngest person in my friend group, always. Like, mm-hmm. if any of my guy friends came out and saw me, they were like, nope, time to go home. Madison's here. Like, this means it's sandbox time. Like, can't <laughs> be here. So um, now that I'm, like, one of the oldest girls in my friend group, like, I hang out with girls that are, like, 17, 16, and I'm like, it's so weird. You're, like, two, three years younger than me, you know? And, and I also feel like once you turn 21, those young friends are just going to magically disappear. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not going to spend time with people who can't go out. Yeah, no, for but, sure. Yeah, but you still so LA- yeah, LA is kind of like if you're just like if you're low key, no one really cares. Mama plays the system. Yeah, you I, know, I you, play it. You know what you're doing in a big way. Yeah, it's actually really impressive. Thank you. Did you learn that on your own, like how to navigate the LA nightlife and still get in at you um, know being underage? Nightlife wise, I mean. I only really started going out this year, like when I turned 18, I kind of like never really had an interest in going out. I just would rather like stay in bed and watch TV. Yeah. Um, like I was such a homebody for so long and uh, this summer I just started going out a lot and seeing what that scene is like. What do you make friends with the bouncers? <laughs> I mean, sort of. Like, I mean, the, I only really go to like three places, like get in rotation. You love your, you love a good trip to Delilah. Delilah's my spot. Poppy, you know, like all those kind of places. Don't you get uh, bored of the same places going every night? I mean, I don't go that often and it's always something cool. Like last week, like Lil Wayne performed at Poppy. So it's like, it's not like it's just going out to a club, you know? Okay. And you, Delilah I like because you could sit down and eat but you could also get up and dance if you want. It's a nice combination. It's a nice combo. I've only been there twice, but uh, it's a it's, good experience. It is good. But yeah, I just kind of finesse, you know. Poppy's very cool. Poppy is very cool. You know. I'm having my birthday party there on Monday. What? Nice. <laughs> a right. nightclub is going to host a 19-year-old's birthday party? <laughs> yes. yes. That's a, I, but when, I was, that? when I was 16, I had my party at a nightclub, <laughs> and it was like totally publicized. On Long Island? <laughs> no, in LA at One Oak. <laughs> I think I had my 16th birthday party at a roller skating. Yeah, no, I was like, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. As she pleases, is the EP, it is out right now. Yes. It's, it, dude, it's a good body of work. Thank you so much. How you feel? Great. I've been in rehearsal for the past two weeks, nonstop. You're getting ready to go on tour? Yeah, I leave two days after my birthday. You have a healthy roster of dates. Yeah, no, I'm gone. I keep showing everyone like my schedule from when I leave to when I get back. I'm really not back in LA until Coachella. What? Are you going to Coachella? Yeah, but right after Coachella, I start the U.S. tour. So wow. it's like I'm gone for a month, back for a weekend, and then gone again for a month. Why are we starting international and not domestic? You know, I mean, the domestic rooms are much bigger. Yes. So I figured I'd rather start. This is my first tour. This is ever my first headlining anything in my life. So it's like if I mess up, I'd rather be in front of like a smaller amount of people. Totally get it. You know, then at my LA show where all my friends are, like I'd rather be seasoned at that point. Yeah, you're doing the Belasco Theater. Yeah. 
Tawasco, Belasco, whatever it is. Whatever that. But you're probably going to have, a, hopefully we get invited. Duh. Yeah, but you have quite, <laughs> don't duh me. <laughs> Sister has quite the, the list of people that need to I show do, up to the show. There's going to be like 500 extra people there that I'm friends with. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, because you're popular. I'm really not that popular. It's funny. I wake up in the morning and I have like two Instagram notifications from my fan pages and that's about it. What the, I, I call such bull squash I on that. I swear on my life. I never get hit up by anybody ever. It's probably because I ignore a lot of people. It's not purposeful. I just read texts. And, and then you don't answer. respond, right? Mm-mm, Me too. Never, never, ever. Well, I have, let's see how many unread texts I have at this very moment. I have 285 unread. That's And nice. those are just the ones that I just didn't even bother to open. <laughs> There's probably like... 10,000 that I've opened and just been like, no. Who's on today. the list of unread? Like, anybody good? Probably not. I, I open a lot of them. Like, And you text back the good my people. My last unread text is a group chat, um, my videographer. I kind of, like, don't. I open everyone's text, but literally none of these are answered. Like, these are all unanswered. So, technically, you're popular. You're getting the you're getting the text. They don't come in often, though. Okay, fair They're, They come in rarely. Okay. But when they do come in, I do not answer, and that's why I think they come in rarely, you know? I get it. Yeah, you got to give to have a relationship yeah, yeah. with somebody. Someone's going to hit you up two times with no response, and they're going to be over it real quick. Yes. So. But but when Dan reaches out, you answer. No, you... she changed her number or blocked oh. me or one of the two. Blocked you? Well, I don't know. I texted <laughs> you about- block somebody? Unless you did something really bad to me, there would be no reason. No, the day that you're- even... I don't think no. I've ever blocked anybody. Okay, well, ever. then you changed your number. I did change my number. Because the, the, a few days before the EP came out, I heard home with you. I was like, this is good. I should let her know. And I texted you. This is good. I should let her know. I should let her know. I should be the nice guy. And I texted you and it turned out green. I was like, well, that's That's the rude. worst when it says like not delivered. Yeah. And you get the little red, mm. you know. Yeah. So I, I sent thing. you a message on Instagram instead. Wow. Did you? Did I see, that's, open it? Yeah, you responded. Did I? See, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a good memory at all. That's a little thirsty. No, it's not. I just no, wanted to be nice. a nice person. You know what, Zach? Be nice. Okay. <laughs> Home with I'll you. I'll give you my new number. Is that the single? It wasn't intentionally the single, but um, apparently it is because it, that's the one that's getting the most attention. Traction, yeah. So when you you release as she pleases, yes. What are you looking for? Are you judging reaction? Are you reading comments? Yeah. No. I mean, listen. Like, I'm really, I'm the type of artist that I'm so in tune with everything yeah. involving my career. Like, I was just at rehearsals and my lighting guy was like, I told him I was like, let's run through the show top to bottom. I want to see all the lighting. I want to make sure it's all in the same color palette. I want, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, you're literally the first artist I've ever met that cares about that. Usually they just let us do whatever we do. And I was like, no, I really want to make sure this is perfect and how I want it to look you know so about the songs I put everything out and in my head there were certain songs where I was like okay I hope this one pops I hope this one pops and there's certain songs on the EP that I only put on there for like my little like artistic flair like I wanted people to be like oh cool like you know she is, writes music like that or is whatever. Tyler Durden one of those yeah that's like my favorite one on complete my concept record yes absolutely there's so many more of those dude I wish I could uh, there's one about Rick and Morty oh. that I just never oh, put that's on awesome. you know Evil Morty's like theme song where it's like ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sampled that in a song oh you should have someone's put that gonna one definitely there. steal that now so but what happened yeah. to it i just didn't put it on because it wasn't really like a strong record it was more just for my own personal satisfaction to use that song did you see the szechuan sauce came back yeah today? yeah we were just talking about that dude today, yeah. i need to go to make they only released like 20 million which sounds like a lot but it's <laughs> mcdonald's yeah, so that's yeah. not that much and, and they released it after a big mess the first time because this is the second time within a year they're releasing it oh i didn't know that yeah they yeah. did it last year why was it a mess D- they didn't release enough and there was mob scenes at mcdonald's <sighs> it was dude, crazy i really am i think comic-con is i'm pretty sure in April. Are you going to go? I want to, but I'm going to be on tour, but I heard that Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland are doing like a live reading. Of course they are. But I would, that's like my dream. You love Rick and Morty. You love Bo Burnham. Don't even get, you want to talk about Bo Burnham? I'll talk about him for an hour and a half. I I know you will. If I type in (laughs) Bo Burnham on my text messages right now, at least 30 people have texted me being like, what Bo Burnham episode should I watch? What YouTube video? I could recite all of words, words, words to you, which is like his rap (laughs) song, his whole make happy what, like he's my favorite human being. You post about him all the time. I know. And he's never given me anything back. (laughs) Wow. That's my heart. Have you met him? No, No. I tweeted yesterday. I said, if I don't meet Bo Burnham by the end of 2018, I will have failed myself. Do you think? Hopefully he'll I heard he's like seven foot 
too. I swear. Probably. I heard he's tall. so tall. I've only met him once really briefly. You met him? Because he used to play like, um, well, are you about to cry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he used to play Bamboozle and the Warped Tour scene for yes. years and years and years ago. Dude. Um, I met him uh, just real quickly at the Giant Stadium parking lot where they used to host Bamboozle. And he is tall. He's like 6'5". He is, right? Yeah, and he plays the piano like nobody's My brother's 6'5", which is really crazy. That's a tall person. Really, he's only like 15, too. And he's, he's oh my he's god, gigantic. I hope he plays sports. But he was playing small rooms at well, the time. No, I mean he was playing. He was playing like a like a tented stage at Bamboozle. Okay, okay, okay. Were people yeah. like loving him then? Yeah, people were. People. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I feel like he was bigger back then than he is now. But now he's directing Chris Rock's special. How crazy is that? Which I'm like the, so proud of him for that. I would only know about that because you posted it. Seriously, that yes. makes me so happy. Some dude actually came up to me at Delilah, and I was like, Hey, I'm gonna be totally honest with you i couldn't give less of a about you or your music or anything he's like i really don't care he's like but i think you're so dope that you watch rick and morty and bo burnham and nathan fielder and like all he's like that's really sick and i was like thank you (laughs) i think but i was like and we talked for like an hour and i was like thank you that's really dope he was like yeah i always try to find girls that are like into even even do you watch nathan for you i have watched Nathan. yeah like i love nathan fielder also i heard that's how he just is do you watch Tim and Eric? I have, but not really. I haven't gone into it. I, I, I've watched a lot of Tim and Eric. I've watched a lot of Nathan Fielder. Nathan Fielder's a genius. My friends are obsessed, so it's the only thing on in our house. Bo just takes the cake for me, though. I just think he's so, like, he just pushes the envelope, but in a, like, because I feel like a lot of comedians push the envelope, but they can go offensive really easily, you know, yeah. like they could just sway on the offensive side, but... When Bo talks about things, he's talking about things that are just so real. Like, have you seen his whole speech about Instagram and, like, social media? No. He's just, like, so genius. You should really watch more of his stuff. You should literally type his name into YouTube and just watch his videos. He's a genius. You have, like, you have a thing. Like, you like white nerdy dudes. Dude, like, Matthew Gray Goobler is, like, the love of my life. (laughs) I would (laughs) marry him today. That's the guy on Criminal Criminal Minds. Minds, Who plays, like, a really, like, high, like, you know, (laughs) genius dude. Know, you like, to- Madison Beer is a type. I do, big but, time. But yet you say you're, quote, in love with a fantasy. Yeah, because I love, I mean, Fight Club, you know. It's all, I also feel bad because people were tweeting me and they're like, this is such a spoiler for the movie. I was like, not really, because oh. if you don't know the movie, you won't get it. First you know, all, it Fight Club's right been out for decades. I'm, right. I'm like, sorry. Seen Fight Club, You've shut your seen mouth. It? No, okay, so then I'm not going to tell you. you the, yeah, but what is it about this character? Is it about like Brad Pitt? Do you want me to tell you the ending? Because that's the only reason you'll, that's the only way you'll like really know. Well, it's been out for years. I think if I would have seen it, I would have seen it by now. So yes, let's spoil it. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Anyone watching, fast forward if you don't want to hear the ending of Fight Club. But basically, it's Brad Pitt and Ed Norton. Okay. It's an amazing movie. The cinematography is so dope. Like there's just moments of just really cool cool, like special things. Um, I don't know how to say her name, but Elena Bonham Carter. Um, Helena Bonham Carter. Elena. Yeah. Elena Bonham Carter. Helena, maybe? I don't know. It's Isn't she two. Tim Burton's wife? wife yeah. yeah, like that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. But um, so she plays Marla Singer, who's like this awesome character, whatever. I'm not going to give you the whole plot of the movie, but basically Brad Pitt is Ed Norton's like subconscious. That's like his cooler, what he wants to be, basically. More badass. You know, like more badass just cool and like fight club is basically they start this fight club and it's all secretive and then they'll be at restaurants and the waiter will have a bruise on his face because he was at fight club and the boss will have a cut you know so just kind of like culty and it's it's really you should just watch it just for the like so how does that relate to the song though because because it's like saying like i'm in love with tyler durden that's why none of this ever working i'm in love with a fantasy because like, he's not real i'm in love with something that's you're not in real. love with a fake character that yes. doesn't exist in real yes. life but exactly. i feel like th- that okay. that's many things like i think you're in love with bo burnham but like i'm bo burnham big time in love with is he with someone i don't think he like publicly says that he is or I I mean, he want, could be married for i, I want to say he's with somebody that breaks my heart but like he plays a character you're in Does love with a character know? well you're, you're in love with a heightened version of his true no, self a hundred percent definitely in love with like his stage persona and like his whole weird shtick that he does but i also love that he's just so advanced like he's so advanced because he's young still right he's yes still, what is he, like, I think 20, he's like 25 yeah, yeah. And he's still young yeah he's been doing it for a long time yes he has yeah. 
Oh, yeah, no, cause, yeah, and Make Happy. He might be 26 now because in Make Happy, he has a line on a song where he's like, I know all about love. I just turned 25. Like, uh, yeah, poking fun of himself. Out. But he's just a genius. I can <laughs> really know, talk about him for You hours. know everything. Knows I'm not kidding. I know She's everything. I love him so much. My uh, friend, my friend's dad is Judd Apatow, and she, like, he threw a whole comedy thing. Uh-huh. And little did I know, Bo was performing. And then I met up with her and my other friend that went to the show, and they were like, yeah. There was really cool people there. This one, that one, whatever. Bo Burnham. I was like, what? I was like, why didn't no one tell me that he was performing in L.A.? Because he doesn't really perform that much anymore. Very rare. So I was like, wow. What, are they even real friends? Right? I, was I like, don't know. Thanks, guys. It was really a really upsetting moment. But, yeah, my friends are really tired of me talking about him. It's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone that I meet that hasn't seen him, I'm like... But has your much. obsession with him uh, and all, all, all these people, uh, has it always been this thick? Like when you were in a relationship, did you have free time yeah. to just obsess over him? Dude, I mean, Jack and I would obsess over different things though. Like we were obsessed with Adventure Time. We okay. were obsessed with like, there were just different things, but I feel like we both are like have always been into the same kind of stuff. Like he loves that humor also. Like Kyle, Kyle Mooney. Yes. We He's loved him. Like really he, funny. I mean, I still, we still both do love him on our own, but he, he does. <laughs> we loved him so much. We used to watch all his videos, and Johnson would always be so good at like impersonating him. It was the funniest <laughs> thing of life. We would always be like, Yeah, bro, my daughter deals. Like, she deals, dude. Like, that's like one of his videos. We, that was all we said all the time. But, um, do you miss that relationship? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm like never one to front and be like, No, we're both in better. But, like, you know, when you're with someone for, three years from 15 to 18 it's like of course you're gonna miss them and it's only it's only we've only been broken up for like six seven months it's not been that long you know it feels like years that you've been broken up i know time moves as she pleases it does how'd you come up with that name um it's funny i actually have a like a notes in my phone of name titles that i was gonna go with Mm -hmm. And I was like, as you please, as I please, as she pleases, as we please together in unison. Like, it just like, like, I was trying to like figure it out. And when I first pitched it to my team, they were like, it sounds really sexual. I was like, does it? I was like, I don't, I didn't take it as that. To me, it, it was more of like, you know, I, I want people to understand about me is that like I was signed very young and I was forced to grow up very young and I was, you know, like I had, I had to be independent on my own for a long time. I've been living by myself with no family in LA since I was like 16. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I have had to grow up really fast and I just want people to understand that like I was put in a box at a really young age that I knew I was more than and I knew that I could do so much more. I was more capable of certain things that I wasn't being allowed to do because of the box that I was put in. So when I broke out of it finally, I was like, you know what? I'm done letting anybody tell me what I'm yeah. doing with my career. It's my name. It's my face. It's, it's my life. Please. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna do as I want, and it's that's it, you know. And I don't care if people think I'm like a bossy b- because if I was a dude, people would be like, oh yeah, like mm-hmm. he's so dope. But <laughs> if you're a girl, it's like, oh she's such a. B-. She's so bossy. It's like I don't care. But you really are the boss of this project because yeah, no, you don't I have am. a label. You fund it yourself. Yeah, don't you? I do every like that's what people keep asking me. People are like, are you gonna make so much money on tour? I'm like, I'm actually losing like lots of money (laughs) for this tour because it's like an investment and I'm investing in myself and like it's for my fans and it's for you know people who have been around for a long time and I want I also don't want to do like the bare minimum if I wanted to have no production and have no band and just do a track and get on stage I'd probably be making a lot more money or money period (laughs) but like I wanted a whole production I want a band I wanted to like look completely you know you want a real stage show. Yeah, no, and I want it to be something that I'm really proud of, not something that I look back on and I'm like, what the hell was I thinking just to make like a quick check? I'd rather, you know, build into my artistry and my story and stuff. And D- Does it add pressure to this releasing music, knowing that it's your money? It's Or it's your money, your family's money? Like Yeah, no, absolutely. You're I all mean, in. Yeah, like the people that write me checks aren't random dudes in suits that they're like my dad it's like you know what I mean it's like I have to and like for me that's like I want to make them proud one day that I could be like oh you know here's this back or whatever and I feel like a lot of families do that even with artists that are yes signed with labels I feel like families are like helping here and there if they can and it's nice as an artist to always be able to give back do you want a major deal or do you see yourself being able to do this on your own my goal is to be independent independent for as long as I can I did the whole label thing it just kind of wasn't for me I didn't like it. I just don't really? like being controlled. It's like, 
if I want to post something on Instagram and you guys don't like it, like, it's, why do you care? It's my Instagram. It's my face. You know? You love control. You don't want to be controlled. No, I don't. Why did it take 19 years to finally release an EP? 19 years is aggressive. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. 18 and a half. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, no, I mean... When I got signed, I was just making music that I was told to make, basically, and I was, you know, like I said, like, put in this little box of pop and things I can say, things I can't say, how I could dress, how I could act, and I felt like I was just being so controlled, and when I broke out of that, it took me a while to find my sound and find things that I was proud of. I've made probably at least five albums, I'm not kidding, with mm. the amount of songs that I have under my belt at this point, but, mm. you know going from 15 to 19 years old you grow a lot as a human being regardless of an artist so being under the spotlight or having people watching everything I do it's been like really hard to just find myself and find the sound that I wanted to go for because my music taste is also so all over the place if you went through one of my playlists you'd be like what the hell like this is just so random there's like Depeche Mode there's Daft Punk there's Stormzy there's like it's like everything so it's like I just there was I was so all over the place. I was like, I want to sound like Amy Winehouse. I want to sound like Daft Punk. I want to. It's you know I just didn't have my direction. And then I I got into the studio for a few months and I found it. And well, what would you say your sound was? Because every song on the EP has a different sound. No, yeah, totally. I I just I try to add like my dark weird like elements to it like in my song teenager in love it's a 50s obviously mm-hmm. inspired song but even in the bridge it like gets darker and has like its little moment and whatever but uh i don't know i feel like my sound is it's just me i don't even want to say it sounds like anyone else because i feel like it's i try to just do things that are different like tyler durden like the inspo behind that was sleepwalk by santo and johnny which is like i think also from the 50s and um, then there's this other song that I actually saw on Vine years ago that's called, like, I Want to Walk Around in Your Mind Someday, and it's such a simple song, and it's just one strum of a guitar. And I was like, this is such a cool way to make a song. I feel like this is so rare these days and without, like, all the production and this and that and, like, the trap beats behind it. I was like, I'm just going to do a simple song that's kind of doesn't really go anywhere. It just stays, like, one note, yeah. and that's how Tyler Durden came along i like tyler durden it's a really great Same. record that's like my favorite one it's my favorite one to perform to live i do something very cool with it and you'll see teenager in love there's no honeymoon avenue inspiration in that ariana grande song yeah she inspires me period i mean does it do they sound similar i haven't listened to honeymoon avenue in so long but oh, i love that song a little bit so it's, Give it a that's listen. the thing is like subconsciously i totally could have been like channeling it yeah, yeah definitely and i love ariana and i people like say that i sound like her sometimes which makes me so happy because i think she's the most talented person ever but um like that's not an insult that's a compliment no i know and it makes me so happy to hear that but i just i never want anyone to think i'm copying anyone i think it's okay to pull inspiration because everyone pulls inspiration from everywhere like kurt cobain said that where is my mind by the pixies inspired all of nevermind so it's like you could pull inspiration from people and get inspired it's okay but i hope no one thinks i'm like copying her or Uh, anything i don't think so i thought it was inspired not copy it easily that was has been one of my favorite songs for so long so it easily could have been subconsciously it was really just 50s stuff though i'm like a really big fan of 50s music like a teenage if you listen to the song a teenager's romance by ricky nelson but my friends are like you should make a whole 50s album if you're so into that stuff i'm like i would love that i like your cool. concept vibe you know thank you i, I dig it I i'm really, glad really that do. you notice it i feel like some people kind of overlook it but it's nice like that guy delilah it's nice for people to actually be like oh like it's cool that you're into this stuff and it's cool that you appreciate it's real art that way and it's really connected to you yeah no fully that's like what I love and that's what I've said about every single thing my tour my EP everything I'm like I want when fans come to my show to be like oh my god I saw that clip on her Instagram like yeah. you know it's like just fluid throughout the whole thing like I said that I've always liked that's why Fight Club is my favorite movie in my tour you'll see clips of Breakfast Club which is another one of my favorite movies you cool. know so it's like I just want people to be like understand who I am through this visual stuff that I'm putting out there. I am pumped to see this tour. Tickets are on sale right now. Yes. You got to go and buy them. And are, everything's pretty much sold out. Yeah, Whoa. I was going to say, were you surprised by that? Dude, what? Okay, so the craziest thing so far has been like, Europe sold out almost right away. Like every single show in Europe. And US, almost everything's sold out, but we bumped a lot of the rooms bigger. So the bigger rooms aren't sold out yet, but it's also in like two more months. Got it. But 
<clears throat> Europe sold out immediately, and everyone was tweeting, like, come to Amsterdam. You don't have a show in Amsterdam for whatever reason. Where I agreed with them. I was like, every artist goes to Amsterdam when they go to Europe. Yeah. So I was like, guys, let's put up a room in Amsterdam. I was like, even if it doesn't sell out, like, the fans that want to go, it'll go. And they went on sale at 10 a.m., and I was refreshing the thing at 10.01, the website crashed, and I called the guy, I was like, dude, the website crashed, no one's gonna be able to get tickets, he was like, no, it didn't crash, he was like, it sold out in literally three seconds, wow. and I was like, what? It was the fastest show to sell out, so shout out to Amsterdam. That's really <laughs> special, dude. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, I, I we weren't even gonna add a show there, so for it to be like the fastest selling one was crazy. But I'm also playing in my hometown, which I'm so Long excited. Island! So it's like the biggest venue in Long Island. Where are think, the, which one? Um, the Paramount. Of course! Yeah, the, I mean, people? no, the NASA <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. No, but it's like for theater, you know? Yes. Um, how many people is it? I think like 1,900, 1,800. That's a nice. Hot, yeah, I thought it was 2,000, but that's... Some, it could be. It's close. I might be totally wrong. Do you but f- then I'm playing Gramercy too, which I'm so excited Oh, that's for. cool. Great venue. Yeah, I'm yeah. so pumped. Do you feel like a lot of people doubted you and think and thought yes. like you would never do this? Are you kidding me? When I like wasn't signed anymore, people probably were like, oh, she's done, whatever. But, you know, I feel like in life you're gonna have stumbling blocks put in front of you like regardless of who you are what you are and if you knew every artist's story of like how they got to where they are today you'd be mind blown so many people think oh she just came out of nowhere well who is this girl you know but it takes so much hard work and dedication and you know it has to be really what you like want to do and in my opinion if you really want to do something and you know you want to go after it then do it and the only like if you fail at least you'll say you tried rather than like never knowing if you know you're gonna do anything or not but it also gives me motivation to like prove people wrong that's it you know? is, like, I'm like I just I hope you look back one day and say your biggest mistake was losing me well a lot of people probably know you as just some hot girl from Instagram but it seems like Thank you're posting you. <laughs> less See, that's another like oh, thanks <laughs> well, I don't know yeah whatever but it seems like you're posting less on Instagram recently yeah. is there a reason behind that yeah no for sure I mean I want to just like I said make it very obvious to people like I'm not just a girl on Instagram that's like my I, I wish I could get rid of all the people who follow me that don't like not don't like my music but don't care about my music or anything like I just don't really care about like followers and stuff it doesn't like if I cared about followers I'd be feeding my followers what they want to see which is selfies and yeah hot photos or it's like I just mm-hmm. don't it's like I don't care about growing my fan my followers I care about growing my fan base but isn't the, that like my music isn't the hope that the people who follow you on Instagram become fans of your music no yeah which is why I'm trying to only really post things that are music oriented yeah. or things that are just personal me like Rick and Morty stuff or whatever <laughs> um, but no yeah like I, I want to I'm still obviously going to post photos of myself too because it is still my Instagram but just just making like a shift of being like an artist rather than a social media influencer, I which I am not. They're two different not. roles. Yes, they I are mean, big time. In a way, even if you don't want to, you kind of are. No, I I am in the like literal sense, but like social media wise, if you look at real influencers pages and mine, it's very different. Yeah. Even if I have followers, you know, it's not like I'm posting things that are like go buy my flat tummy tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just I hate that. Last time you came on, you and Dan had quite the bond. Until I saw that he flirts with everyone, and I was like, oh. <laughs> you, you, she was very offended. I was. You flirted with Liz Gillies, and I was like... And Poppy. And I texted you about Poppy. I was yes. so curious, because I met her so long ago when she was however old she is she didn't tell me her age of course and i was like <laughs> she doesn't have an age i know and i i met her cuz we were both signed with the same label and she was opening up for me at beauty con like 3 4 years ago and we were on the bus and she was completely acting like a normal person whatever and then i was like so where are you from i think she said like nashville which apparently isn't true no she's from nashville but yes, like i saw is. something online that was like she's not well they wiped the internet clean of like everything I know. about her have you seen mars argo though like yes. that girl that was bef- yes. like with sinclair or whatever titanic Titan- sinclair yeah, before titanic. it's really weird the whole situation but she was i was like how old are you and she was just like I was like, what? <laughs> she was just like, and I was like, oh, okay. And I, I said to my mom, I was like, mom, how old do you think she is? She was like, she could literally be 25 or 14. I have no idea. And it kills me. And I'm like, how old is she? But I, I read somewhere online she was born in like 96. So I guess she's 21. She's like yeah. 21, I think. Yeah, but. Mm-hmm. Do you know her real name? No. 
Uh, yes. It's like, it's online somewhere. I found, I've done a lot of digging about Poppy. <laughs> I've done a lot of conspiracy theories. Isn't it like, Mora? It's Mariah. Mariah. M- Mariah with an O. So is that her boyfriend? No, Titanic is just her creative I've partner. heard the opposite. I can tell you that it's not her boyfriend. Well, okay. I know, I I got to She's know, very interesting. I yeah. find her to be a very interesting I met thing. Poppy completely social, like in a completely social setting. Was she being it was a normal? barbecue at my friend's house. Yeah. I mean, so she really only puts it on for like- no, but she's a weird duck. Like like her uh, normal poppy poppy not on camera is still weird. She's the thing not a I normal love about, person. The thing is like I, when when I met her before she kind of really blew up internet wise. Like yeah. I looked at her YouTube videos and I thought she was really genius. I was like this girl's really. I just loved how weird she was and like the stuff she was saying and doing. Also her song Low Life is one of my favorite songs. A great record. Really great record for why well, I don't know why it was never like a smash because it's so good. Yeah. But. Um, she's just so cool, and I like I like how she's kind of doing things that are weird because she's a character, you know. And sometimes I wish I could just be this like persona, not a real person, you because, know. Because she can go away at the end of the day, like she can separate herself completely. Yes, I know, which is like so dope, but, and I think that's so cool. She's like literally two different people. But I was watching her videos, and I love how she overdubs her videos with like a, a thing like really close to the camera, <laughs> so you could hear everything. And it's just like I think she's just genius. I it's love it. ASMR. Yes. And, it is. By the way, we've, we've had artists come in here. Who who separate themselves and like really? have yeah G Easy, you know he he went into like uh well I think it was G he he was talking about like keeping a distance and he has like one one persona that he puts on to the camera and then like oh he has G Easy and Gerald. Gerald yeah but there's a couple really? of others too yeah see I just can't do that I just can't well back to you and Dan oh <laughs> because you guys ended up trying to almost hang out once yes yeah, just, you know things just don't always work out well, well at Delilah didn't we try to meet up with Delilah we did. Here's the story I heard. I'm not oh into God. those fancy places. It's not fancy. <laughs> those like I went ho- there in sweatpants last night. Yeah, but your boyfriend like works there. You can get in and whatever you want. <laughs> you, you have yeah, a boyfriend? No. What? No. <laughs> we'll get Shut there. Up. What? Um, we'll get there. I hate you. Oh my God. <laughs> so you. that's what I heard. No. Okay. Continue to me and Dan. <laughs> you you invited Dan to Delilah. Dan I arrives did. to Delilah to see to find you in a booth. With uh, Drake, you that did hang- happen. You were hanging you were out there with that Drake. Night? That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> well, I came with a group of people, and you were with a group of people. I was like, oh, Wait, did gr- I see you, or you just saw me? It was a very quick second. And oh I was, yeah, I did see you. Yeah, I and I was that. like, your group's pretty cool, and my group, like, we're okay, but like, I have no Drake with me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that like, was wasn't a God's night. plan. You really need to Jeez. just not do that. But. Um, <laughs> That was really not what you think it was. Drake and I have had never had any interest in each other ever whatsoever in the slightest. Um, but you're friends. We're friends. Yeah, we were just chilling. There was actually two other people in that booth. Just, you know, it wasn't just us. Yeah, but you well, inv- I know. I'm not, I didn't say that. You invited, Don't insinuate. You invited Dan insinuate. to Delilah. Did I? Okay, but Drake probably pulled up like right after. And I probably, I don't know. You're probably like Dan who? I don't know. No, Honestly, it was, no, no, no. Probably I yes. Would've. Probably yes. No, I would have too. I'd have been like, I'd rather bang no. Drake too. Oh my but like, God. <laughs> no. But like the, no. No, the whole thing. Okay, my headphones are coming off. It was no. just like, it was just like, yeah, it was just awkward. The whole thing was just awkward and it was strange. And but I was you like, were with your friends. That's probably why I didn't come like hang with you. Because if you were alone, I would have been like, come sit with us, come chill. Yeah, yeah. Invite Dan to hang out I a would've. booth with you and Drake. I would have. Oh my God. I <laughs> swear. Full squad. I swear. <laughs> Swear. Oh my god, I would love that photo. Right? Just the two of you with Dad's tiny ass in the middle. The funniest thing about Drake is he drinks wine spritzers. Like that's all he drinks. <laughs> Zach drinks. But he, really? What? Yes. At, dude, it's all at Del- okay. Nice guy makes the best wine spritzer ever. It's called Drake Spritzer, and it's so good. Uh, uh, Drake just lost uh, some I street cred for me. Jeez. Isn't that right? I know. Isn't that funny? But yeah, it's like, like all cognac. he drinks. It's so funny. Oh. I mean, of course, like occasionally he'll drink like Hennessy or yeah, something, yeah. but. Whenever I see him, he's he's got a wine spritzer. And oh like, my god, he's amazing! I know he is amazing. He's really the sweetest guy. He's a really wow. good person. How he's did Canadian. you? How do you? Yeah, I love I love Canadians. I like think the, I love people. the accent. Yeah, good how, people. How did you meet him? Um, I met him actually like two years ago at his Memorial Day party. Wow. Yeah, what which was a like? really fun party. And like, just I'm not going to tell this whole long story, but Jack and I were together there with Drake. And me and Jack were kind of like fanboying a lot. <laughs> and then Jack was like, yo, I really have to pee. And I was like, dude, like, don't make me ask Drake to like take us <laughs> to the bathroom. Right now. I was like, come on. And he was like, dude, like, I can't wait in the line, like publicly. You know, there's a huge line. Like, let's go to his room or something. I was like, we just met the guy. I was like. 
Okay. <laughs> so I was like, yo, Drake, I was like, <laughs> uh, I was like, can we go to the bathroom in your room? I was like, I just really don't want to wait on this line. And he was like, yeah, of course. And this is when I was like, okay, he's really dope. He grabbed my hand. I grabbed Jack's hand. Jack grabbed my other friend who was with us hands. We all like walked through the whole party. And this girl had like a vodka cranberry or something in her hand and she tripped and fell and spilled all over Drake. Like all over his like white sweatsuit. Oh, it's hilarious. Okay. And then no, and I was like, something's about to go down. Yeah, like right? this girl's about to get carried out, you know? <laughs> and I was standing there like, oh shit. and he looks at the bar and he goes, What were you just drinking? And she goes, uh like a vodka cranberry. And he looks at the bar and goes, get her another vodka cranberry. That's nice. And I was like oh my god he's the sweetest person and then she was like i'm so sorry and he was like dude i'm in my own house i can go change right now he was like chill he took us to the bathroom he showered changed we went back out and it was totally fine but it was just so dope because like to just it's not even it's funny that i say that's so dope because that's really just being like a normal human Mm -hmm. being but when you're such a big celebrity you kind of expect them to feel like they're so much higher and better than everyone so it was just really nice to see him like be a real person you know because it's just it wasn't really expected, which is messed up that it's not expected, but Dude, I know real cool. people who would have freaked out on this girl. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. He's a good person. No, yeah, know? he's just really sweet and yeah. down to earth and, like, wasn't about to throw a hissy fit. He can go change yeah. and, like, I don't know. He, he's, just, he's really, really cool. Seriously. Did what you watch him shower? <laughs> no, <What>? Dan. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fun fact, though, his, his house that he has, he has a bathtub that is literally the size of this room. What? I kid you not. Uh, that's like awesome. A, it's called a pool. I'm not. No, no, no. That's what I said. He, it's a full bathtub and it's gigantic and so dope. I was like sitting in it. I was like, can I, can I just lay here and like chill? Do you need bubble bath? Like, <laughs> bath bomb? Let's do this. I, I like, a, just pause the party. What a guy. He's a good, he's a good one for sure. Hey, wow. um, what, which of these songs on the EP is inspired by Brooklyn Beckham? You need to just stop. This is just like, <laughs> what is this? None of them. Y- is that relationship still happening? What? We that just was established never a relationship. That she had a boyfriend. Can we all just not do this? That yes. was never a relationship. That's not what those kissy clear. wizzy pictures said. That okay. wasn't a kissy picture. You've never kissed somebody you're not dating. Be real with me. <laughs> not in public in front just of. Be, just not. D- 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 have you ever kissed somebody that you're not dating? <laughs> I'm asking. Not from my. Just for. I'm asking a question. Have you, Dan? Not in. Ha, a, 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 yes or no? <laughs> not. In public, in front of the paparazzi. Well, paparazzi. We were in Barney's inside. There was no paparazzi in there. It was a like photo taken by a human being, not a paparazzi. You never dated anyone. Dated anyone? So then, yes. The, the answer is just yes. yes. Zach, have you ever kissed somebody that you haven't dated? Oh yeah. I go out on dates with people, okay. and I need to kiss them and make sure it works See? before I give time to have a second date. See? Okay, but not in line at a grocery store. Well, I, I mean, if we happen to be at a grocery store and that's a part of the second date. <laughs> Man, you know, I. As she pleases. Well, it was pretty cool. Is the EP out now? No, I also will say I. It, it was pretty cool. I was. He's a. He's one of my good friends. He's a great guy. He's with. He's dating somebody. So clearly that relationship isn't. Was never happening. It's not happening. He's an amazing guy. He's very sweet. They went on dates. They weren't dating. Yeah, we hung out. We were hanging out. You can do. We're that. kids. Why is everyone? I didn't say. Our anything. birthdays are also like on the same day, which is cool. Oh, nice. That'd be really nice. Yeah, he's cool. Okay. Well, it was Moving pretty cool. On. It was pretty cool that uh, Shay Mitchell just. That was really cool because I love. I was the biggest Pretty Little Liars fan of life. I mean, I love it still, but I was religiously a watcher. Is she her. listening to your music? She posted a story listening to Home with You, which was really. No, awesome. it wasn't Home with You. It was uh, Fools. It, wow. Because I follow oh. Shay Mitchell. You, no, I, I, I follow Shay Mitchell, and I was listening. I was like, I know this song. It what is this? It definitely was Fools. Hold I was like, where is this song you. from? I know this. You know what I'm learning right now? The Talk Box. Don't know what that is. What is that? Dude, it's like this. Okay. That's oh, I saw that this morning. It's a tube that goes, fr- it's like with Daft Punk. It's You know on Bruno Mars's 24 Karat Magic when it goes tonight? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a talk box because obviously he doesn't actually sound like a vocoder machine, but it's vocoder is like a different thing. Basically, it's a tube that you put in your mouth and you push keys on a keyboard and you shape words with your mouth. Whoa. That's cool. It's the coolest thing ever. Like, I wish I had videos of me doing it for real because hold on did you use it like, on record one, two, three, this is them four. playing it the and tubes in my mouth i'm not speaking into it. it no but you don't speak at all you literally just mouth things and the because it replaces your vocal cords so it like the 
key, then so it's so hard to explain. The sound comes out of the keyboard, goes into your body, and then you shape words when it goes back out. Whoa. It's so, if you look up videos of it, it's so dope. It's the coolest machine ever. It's That's so, I'm practicing it right now because it's so difficult. Are, are you going to take it on the road with so you? So in Fools, I have a vocoder part in the bridge, and I'm like hoping I learn how to play it well enough by then. Oh, wow. So I could do it live, which would make me very happy. I am very excited for this tour. You really need to come. It's oh, gonna I'm be going to be really, really dope. Like, I think you're going to be really impressed. That, that, I'm really excited. It, you're putting really together excited. a real show. I am. I'm like really, I'm really into this whole thing. And the last time you were here, you were just doing like you were just coming off your acoustic tour. You know, it was just yeah, which it was, was low like, key. which I hated. Like I just don't. I like to perform. You know, so yeah. for me to like, I mean, I liked it because it was fun to tour and you know sing for fans. But I just you know I like to dance and have a whole set and have this fog machine and all that stuff like <laughs> what else are you going to perform because there's only seven songs that's not enough yeah no i have like so since i started on youtube making covers i felt like why well, don't do any covers so i have like three covers i'm doing and then possibly a few old songs Ooh. possibly how about melodies or no. all for love melodies will never live ever again <laughs> melodies <laughs> needs to die and stay in its coffin and never move ever again. <laughs> Rest in peace to Melodies. Love you. What song off of As She Pleases tells the listener the most about you? Honestly, probably Tyler Durden. Yeah, I can hear that. It's just, you know, I love it. Totally unique. Yeah, or I don't even know. Tyler Durden's a good answer. I, I just love it because it was the one that I was the most excited about because it was really the one that I wrote like pretty much solo like had the idea for it all myself mm -hmm. you know like came in the studio with my writers and i was like yo i would need to write a song about fight club and they were like a hundred percent let's do it beautiful so, when you when proud. you came in to talk about dead you said there was no shade in that song no you shade. didn't write it blah 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 I didn't. how about the rest of them do they, they more mean other than tyler Durden? do the other ones have more meaning than Dead. Yeah, no, for sure. But meaning, like, not even anything personal. I wrote Fools when I was, like, 16. Fools is an old song. If you look, like, that's why I think it's doing so well is because my fans were all so hyped about it because they had seen teasers, like, three years ago, you know? Um, but, yeah, f like, they're all pulled from... S if, if I told you the inspo behind every line of every song, you'd be like, what? It's all from movies. It's from, like, things I see when I'm out in public. It's not a lot of personal experiences. I don't really pull from that. How at home with you? It's yeah, it's just kind of I go out a lot and I feel like that's such a thing that happens is like guys are always just like Being way too aggressive and way annoying and you know, like even the other night like I tried to hold my hand I was like, okay, that's just weird and creepy. <laughs> you didn't know him? <laughs> Not at all He like fully just like reached down and tried to hold my hand and I was like, sir, <laughs> sir, <laughs> like, okay, sir. No. Back off. And I like tried to play it off like he did it on accident and I kind of just like walked away It was just so weird. A handhold is really intimate. That's really creepy like it made me really uncomfortable i felt really and also violated. like weirdly possessive for just a stranger to do just very, yeah i don't like that especially Super when odd. someone's not single you like, need to stop <laughs> my song that song though is like it's because i see that stuff all the time at so you're taking in reality and then you're yeah that you know you. like i'll look over at a club and i'll see a guy like all over a girl and i'm like i wish she could just be like i'm not going home with you I also have merch she hats should. that are coming out that literally say I'm not going home with you and I hope people wear them at the club. You like should that. wear it at the club. You <laughs> should know. start that. I know. Uh, my merch is really cool. I'm very excited for it. My I'm whole thing is the Grim Reaper now. It's like my thing. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really yeah. dark. I know. But I'm, I like that. You know, that's how it's, I'll have to I'm pick up some dark. Madison Beer merch. No, it's cool. It's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously because of dead. So I get it. You know? Uh -huh. On that note, as she pleases, that is the EP. You gotta listen to it if you haven't. And, and tickets are going fast, slash, not even available for sale anymore. Yes, the, no, there's tour. a few. There's a few cities. Go check it out on madisonbeard.com slash tour. And uh, Dan Zola will be making an appearance at the Blasco Theater. Yes, <laughs> uh, the night Madison Beer performs. Yeah, right. Well, you'll be I'll, there. Yeah, of course. Good. Will you? I mean, if you if, give me your new number and tell me to come. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be my number, <laughs> Don't worry. I'll there be go. there a hundred percent. Yes. I will be present. I need to be there as well. I will be there. Madison, <laughs> Heather's, be there. Heather's going. I'm going. I'll bring my dog, Leslie. <laughs> what kind of dog? Oh, she's a puggle. Well, part puggle. And then I feel like we spoke thing. about this probably. because I probably freaked out. And I talk her about her all the time. So It's all she has How to talk she? about. She's six. Yeah, exactly. I'll show you some pictures. I'm after. getting a dog after tour, 100%. I'm already DMing like places to get the dog, and I'm like... 
Tom you should Brady adopt. Games. Are you still in that apartment? So I want. Yes. Are you still in the apartment? Oh yeah. I'm How not leaving, it? baby. <laughs> I planted my flag no, in that mine's, place. <laughs> mine's great. I got a really. Did, have you seen mine? I haven't been over. It's really dope. <laughs> I, I want to come over. You right down the street. Jacked the apartment that I wanted. He literally oh, yeah. took it out from another rug. Oh, don't me. worry. We've heard about it. He's so mm. proud of this. I know. It's one of my. I hate you. It's one of my proudest accomplishments. I just love it because the view is so pretty in the apartment. Where my apartment's bigger, but there's no view. That sucks. And I like the view. But it's all good. You know, it's all good. I'll hey, I'll take one. a photo of my view and I'll send it to Perfect. you I'll hang <laughs> every it. morning. It? I'll hang it. Yeah, I'll just put it over the window. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'll get you. Like a current. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> when are you moving here. out? Are you moving out anytime soon? No. I'm, I'm here for a, I'm probably another year. You bought year. it? No. Not oh. Yet. See, my lease was only a year. Well, yeah. We're Mine's here. up. I'm we're, out. I got to find a new place. Really? We're here for two. That's good. Man. I should have done two. It's time. I mean, you get a winner like that, you can't leave. This is true. That's it. It's on the 11th floor, right? Yeah. Never forget. <laughs> 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 what were you about to say? Oh, man. No, there was just, just quickly, um, a few weeks ago, you were driving up the street. I was about to cross the street, and you came to a red light. <laughs> And you're, and you're so, you? No. He's stalking you. He's definitely stalking you. Right? No, we all, we all live near each other. Where do you live? In West Hollywood. So do I. I, I know. I just said we live near each other. But <laughs> you were coming up the street, and I was walking this way, and I looked up, and you were there on your phone. And I was like, <laughs> oh, no, this is going to be awkward. I wasn't on my phone. And I turned the other way. You ran from her? It wasn't really. Wait, over. where was I driving? You were dri- up On, like, Sunset? Yeah, you were about to turn on to Sunset coming from that street and like we were like right here and if you if you weren't looking down oh i was at a red light though okay so i wasn't driving we would have we would have been eye to eye and i was like this is gonna be awkward and i turned and went the other way what were you in your car (laughs) i was walking my dog oh you're walking you walk no the other day funniest thing ever the other day i was literally driving up my street which is of no outlet like street with like three apartment buildings on it including mine okay and I'm driving up the street and I see a bright blue Lamborghini parked on the side of the road and I'm like, Justin? I was like, that's Justin's car. And I look and he's standing outside just like on his phone, chilling. And I was like, I backed up. I was like, hey, dude. And he's like, hey. I'm like, what are you doing here? He was meeting with Pooh Bear, that writer that he writes with all the time. But I guess he lives in a building there. And I was like, you are so noticeable. It's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, yeah, no, it's like also not like bait. It's like bright royal. You can see it from uh, 50,000 feet above. Literally, like, swear to God. And I was like, oh, my God, what are you doing here? And he was just like, I'm just chilling. I was like, that's casual. It's a nice neighborhood. You see people there. I always think, though, I'm like, I wish I was with somebody that was like a huge fan, you know, because what if how cool would that be if you were just a huge fan and you were driving up the street and just saw Justin Bieber like chilling? That's, That'd be cool. Yeah. That's an experience. Yeah. When are you and Justin going to release a song together? <laughs> We've made so many songs together. Really? Yeah. But they were a long time ago when he was kind of in his like bizzle phase of doing <laughs> trap-esque music. <laughs> um, they're really cool songs. There's actually one called Do It Like That, which is super dope. And every wow. person that hears it is like so sick. Um, we just both are so busy right now that we haven't had time to get back and really make them great. But um, they were literally, we did them so long ago. I don't know if you, you, I don't know how long you've been following me on Instagram, but I posted an Instagram photo in like 2014 being like in the studio with Justin in Miami and wow. that was when we recorded them. So. But you have those records on your I computer do. somewhere. I do have them somewhere, somewhere. I'm not sure where, but somewhere. Madison Beer, As She Pleases, that is the EP. Go listen. We thank you for being here. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. You are a uh, good energy. Thank you. Talented soul. Seems a lot. My aura is a nice, like, light pink or something. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank it was you. like a nice, like, a light purple, actually. Like an orangey that's, sunset. Love that. Type thing, yeah. Purple, that's a good the, one. It's like the sunset that I see from my, my house. Oh, <laughs> All the time. Oh, <laughs> just constant. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, the view is awesome. I know. <laughs> you missed out, dude. I know, I did. <laughs> I should have, like, outbid you or something. <laughs> just bought it. <laughs> Just to get the view. It's fine. Next year I'll be moving in. Let me know when you're out. <laughs> I'll keep you in the loop. Wait, didn't your roommate get like, didn't he need like a bath or something? Yeah, we need a bathtub. Did you get it? Yeah, that's the reason we needed See? that apartment because the other ones in that building had no bathtub. And uh, There were other ones in the building? Yeah, there were a few other free ones. Not as nice. No. No, no, no. It, that, don't you have a walk-in closet, too? Yeah. You don't need that. Well, I yeah, need cause, that. Because I, well, sh- I, my roommate's in your bedroom. I'm in the guest bedroom. My bedroom. Yeah. It was going to be my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I have photos of everything that I wanted to be in there. I hate you. <laughs> I'm leaving. Goodbye. Madison Beer, everybody. All right. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that conversation.
If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.